Wheels with quick releases or threaded axles easily drop into a truing stand, but wheels with through axle hubs don't. The truer skewer takes the place of a 12 millimeter, 15 millimeter, or 20 millimeter through axle, so the wheel can be held in the truing stand. And all the skewer bits have O-rings to keep everything together while the wheel is out of the stand. I designed and released these for sale on my website, russellmakes.com, in the fall of 2021, and throughout 2022, I produced and sold nearly a hundred of these. Thank you to everyone who bought one. Well, I recently reconsidered my method of manufacturing these and uh, produced a couple new fixtures to help me make truer skewers. So let's check this out. So we're trying to make a few different parts. Uh, a couple of them kind of look like this, round with a flange. And of course the other one is this rod and it gets these flats milled on and some engraving and some o-ring grooves the o-ring grooves are actually due in the lathe over here so uh, we're just talking about the milling machine for right now and in the mill i have two vices these are commonly called soft jaws so this is just a chunk of metal that's made to bolt onto the vise and you can carve out whatever shape in it you want and it's for the purpose of holding odd shaped parts right the vise typically has like a flat jaw, which holds a block like this nicely. You know, you can tighten it down, but if you're trying to hold round pieces of material like this, which is what we're starting out with to make a 15 millimeter collar, then you need a way to hold a round piece of material, right? So I cut these round pockets out so that I could hold four pieces of stock for 15 millimeter collars in this case. So these ones I have over here on the right side are for the first operation. So the pockets are shallower. It would get bolted right there. This gets clamped in there and features get machined in this piece of material. But then when that's done, you've got this, you've got this piece on the bottom here that hasn't been machined. So you gotta flip it over and put it over here in this side. So these jaws over here were the second operation jaws. So the 15 millimeter collar would fit down inside there and I would machine the top side, the flange side of the collar, do the engraving, and then that was it for the second operation. Then when I was done machining 15 millimeter collars, I would take the bolts out, flip these around, and these are the pockets for the 20 millimeter collars. It's a different size stock. And of course, when they're finished, they're a different size. So these ones got flipped around too. At the time, I thought that was pretty slick because, hey, I'm using the same piece of material to make two different parts. It's efficient for material for soft jaw use. I'm holding four pieces at a time in each vise. So I'm holding eight pieces at once. So that's really what I was focused on when I was making these. I had three different parts to make, but I didn't want three different fixtures. I wanted one set of fixtures to make all the parts for the truer skewer. And the other thing was I wanted to maximize the number of parts that I could hold in a vise at one time so that I could have four pieces in this vise and four pieces in that vise. And every time a machining cycle was finished, I got four finished 15 millimeter collars and four halfway done 15 millimeter collars. And I would swap the halfway done ones over to the op two side and then load the op one side with new ones and continue on. So that seems pretty slick, but in practice, it had some problems. First of all, there's a problem with trying to clamp four pieces in vise jaws like this, because all you can do with this vise is tighten this lead screw and clamp everything down in a uniform way. Well, if this piece happens to be slightly smaller than the piece that's in here and here, and this piece is a little bit bigger, then these jaws are gonna wanna be cockeyed a little bit. But, you know, if the big pieces are on the end and the small pieces are in the middle, then these pieces aren't gonna be clamped as tightly as the outside pieces. And so there's a risk when you're machining them for the pieces to get ripped out of the jaws. And you can break a tool doing that. And of course you make scrap parts doing that. So that's not ideal. Another issue is to make truer skewers, I have to make 15 millimeter collars and I have to make 20 millimeter collars. So to group the 15 millimeter collars like this and then to make myself do another setup and unbolt these and flip them around to then make 20 millimeter collars. I mean, 
I basically just created another setup for myself for no reason. So when I'm talking about doing another setup, I'm really talking about doing two things. First of all, I gotta take the bolts out that hold these jaws on, and I gotta flip the jaws around and bolt them back on, but that uncovers another issue. Before the bolts are tightened, you can see that the jaw has a little bit of play side to side. So the location of the jaw on the vise is not consistent. Well, the machine doesn't have eyes. The machine doesn't know where the parts are. So you need to tell it where the parts are. And if the parts are located in the jaws, but the jaws are not located on the vise in a repeatable, precise manner, really the only thing you can do is reference the corner of the jaw. So I've got this little label right here. Right in that corner, it says OP2 G55 XYZ 0, 0.0. So OP2 is pretty obvious. It's the second operation jaw. G55 is a work coordinate system. So like I said, the machine doesn't have eyes, so you have to tell it locations in space to reference as a zero point. And in this case, I was referencing that corner of this jaw as an X, Y, Z axis zero point. So what that means for the setup is every time I move these jaws or flip them around or do whatever I have to do, I then have to come in with this indicator and basically touch off the corner of this jaw and tell the machine that this is my new XYZ 0.4 G55. So by designing these to hold four 15 millimeter collars at once and then flipping them to hold four 20 millimeter collars, I'm creating all this work, not only flipping them, but also having to reset my XYZ zero location. <sighs> there must be a better way. <laughs> so here's what I did. First of all, I invested in the Carve Smart vice jaw system. I'm not trying to promote car smart. I paid full price for these and they are expensive, but they're pretty sweet. Let me show you how it works. So this jaw bolts to the vice the same way the old style ones did, but it has a dovetail cut in. And when you loosen these screws, this guy comes up. See how that also has a dovetail and it pops down into there. But if I unscrew that, and there's three of them up here. Then I can take this jaw, which also has a dovetail cut in it, and it has this locating pin, which interfaces with this little groove right here. So the dovetail fits in here. Bada boom, bada bing. And because of that locating pin that's in there, I can't move that side to side at all. And then I tighten these down, and that... Tighten all three down, of course, and that is in location in the exact same spot every single time. So what that means for me is the way I'm using these, rather than setting my XYZ zero location to the corner of this jaw, I'm setting it to the corner of this jaw, the Carve Smart jaw, because this one's never going to come off the vise again. So G56 XYZ zero is that corner and G55 XYZ zero is this corner on this vise. So I can change these jaws out and, <laughs> and never reset the coordinate system again. There are other advantages to the Carve Smart jaws, but the repeatability of the side to side location is, is the biggest one for me because it allows me now to basically model my whole setup, my, my vices, the Carve Smart jaws, and all the little Carve Smart dovetail jaw attachments that I can put on here. I can model those in the computer. And now when I'm creating machining programs, I can drop the part right into the vise, into the modeled vices in the computer, which are referencing the G55 and G56 coordinate systems that are just consistent now, because I'm not gonna remove these Carve Smart jaws. And I never, I mean, I'm gonna have to use this sometimes, but very rarely do I even use this anymore. So I don't even have to, as long as I get the setup right, as long as the jaws are in the right spot, which I can note in my programs, I'm good to go. So I was starting to ramble and gush there a little bit, but this is a big deal. You can see I've got my vices modeled in the computer I can swap out whatever jaws I have in the Carve Smart jaws, and I can drop my parts right into the vise, and I can note in the programs the location of the stock in the vise and the size of the stock and everything. So it makes it easy to get the setups correct, and I don't have to constantly be resetting my XYZ zero location.
Okay, so now that I have a consistent location for my fixtures, let's rethink what would be the best truer skewer fixture. A truer skewer comes with one 12 millimeter rod, two 15 millimeter collars, and two 20 millimeter collars. Wouldn't it be grand if every time a machining cycle completed, those were the parts that I ended up with? Not some random, you know, as many 15 millimeter collars as I can hold, four in the case of the old setup. Just every time a cycle finished, one kit's worth of parts were finished. Wouldn't that be grand? Yes, it would be grand. Thanks for noticing, Austin. Hence, the new truer skewer op 2 op 1 and 2 for the 12 millimeter rod but the op 2 fixture this thing is slick so let's take a look at our notes here we got truer skewer fixture 2 i already knew that thanks we got g55 carve smart hard jaws so that lets me know that we're using the carve smart hard jaws to hold on to this fixture We've got X0 reference, lower machined edge down here. So what I'm intending to happen here is when this is still loose and this is floating side to side, I can just take a parallel and just make sure that this thing is flush with the edge of these jaws. And then of course we've got 20 millimeter op two, 15 millimeter op two, as if it wasn't obvious. These just slip in there like such. And when this screw is tightened down, this black piece drops down between these two gold pieces and wedges it outward and then secures these pieces so that I can finish machining, you know, machine the top and do the engraving basically. And same goes for the 20 millimeter ones. Then over here, I've got 12 millimeter rod op one with an arrow pointing to this groove and 12 millimeter rod op two with an arrow pointing to this groove. You notice this one has a little flat spot in the middle. This one does not. What's up with that? Well, for the first operation of the rod, we've just got a round rod, right? So that's gonna lay in there. And then these turn sideways and you tighten these screws down and it'll clamp down on that. Of course, you got another rod over here, but the flat spot is because one flat has already been cut in the in the rod after operation one. So it might look something like this. Of course, this is anodized, but you get the point. That's just got the RM logo and the flat spot ground in it. And I want the second flat spot to be parallel to the first one. So when I flip it over, the flat spot that's just been cut interfaces with the flat spot that's in the fixture. And now when I have this rod in here and I tighten those down, everything ends up looking good. Quick little note about these clamps. I've got springs under there, which is pretty slick, so that when I loosen these, they stay up. Basically, that just makes it easier to unload and load parts out of here, because otherwise you imagine you loosen the screw and it's just gonna wanna fall down, and you turn it sideways, and it's gonna wanna fall down in between the rods and just kinda get in the way. So I put a spring under there to hold these parts up. Both of them have that. Now for the first operation jaws, for the collars, I'm holding four pieces at once, just like I was before. But this time it's a little bit different because I'm using Versa grips. And what these do is when you tighten this down, there's these little, there's these little teeth in here that bite into the part. And you can kind of see these ones have a little bite taken out of them. So you're not really relying on the dimension of the part as much. Whereas before I just had a smooth pocket that kind of clamped down and I was worried about parts getting ripped out of the vise. This way, even if the parts are slightly different sizes, they're, they're still getting bitten on by these Versa grips. So there's a little bit more of a positive hold and these have been working pretty good for me. So when we're rocking and rolling here, we got two Op 1 15 millimeter collars, two Op 1 20 millimeter collars, one Op 1 12 millimeter rod, one op two 12 millimeter rod, two op two 15 millimeter collars, and two op two 20 millimeter collars. This kicks ass. Oh, one more detail. Uh, same fastener size for these and these. So I can just use the same T handle to unload the whole op two fixture. The op one fixture gets undone by just the vise. So easy in and out of all the parts. And uh, man, I'm really pleased with this. If I haven't made it abundantly clear already, the fact that I can just 
drop these fixtures in and not even have to reset my XYZ zero locations is huge. And I'm getting one kit's worth of parts every machining cycle. Yes. I'm pretty thrilled with the new milling fixtures. That whole setup is, is awesome. Of course, there's a little bit of manual lathe work to do. I do all that by hand. Um, just the O-ring grooves on the 12 millimeter rods and I face the ends of the 12 millimeter rods. Not a big deal. I do that while the mill is running, so that's nice. Then of course I anodize the parts, I put O-rings in them, I package them up, I put them in the mailbox, they make their way out into the world and they arrive at your doorstep and now you're able to true through axle wheels easily. Incredible. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you liked in the comments. If there's something you didn't like, you probably didn't make it this far in the video. So a lot of pretty thick nerd talk in this video, a little bit different than my usual stuff. So let me know what you think. Uh, oh, oh, one more thing. If you want a truer skewer, they're available right now in stock, russellmakes.com. Check it out, russellmakes.com store. You know where to go, you'll figure it out. Cheers, tune in for the next one, thanks.